this. Boop, there we go. All right. <laughs> That's a good thing to have. All right, guys. So, yeah. Uh, we're taking a first look into the new IPvT10. Uh, it's our enterprise video conferencing server. Uh, one of our, it is our newest device here, Grandstream Networks. We're pretty excited about it. Have a lot of stuff to cover in this presentation. Uh, so, let's go ahead and just get going with it. Uh, so yeah, so Grandstream in general, if you're kind of new to us, uh, you know, we're found, we are a huge company, founded in 2002, over 600 employees, uh, we have a massive product portfolio that only keeps growing, covering uh, everything from business conferencing, IP phones, gateways, ATAs, networking devices, surveillance, our award-winning IP PBXs, and much more. Uh, we primarily serve the small to medium-sized businesses and consumer markets. However, you know, this is definitely changing. Uh, for example, the release of this new product, IPBT10, uh, focusing towards larger businesses and enterprise markets. Uh, we really have some offices all over the world here from Boston, Shenzhen, uh, Casablanca, Venezuela, um, Netherlands, Malaysia, and so on. Uh, Award-winning history, you know, year after year, we keep getting the pleasure of uh, getting nominated and uh, getting awarded just different, uh, different kind of honorable mentions and awards here. Everything from our Internet Telephony Awards to our Frost and Sullivan Award, um, WebRTC World gave uh, IP Video Talk the product of the year, uh, and so much more. Uh, ITSPA Awards 2018 for our uh, best product uh, for the uh, 1760W, and the list goes on. Uh, you know, we're definitely always really proud to get these awards and just get anything nominated. So we always kind of want to show that off just a little bit. Uh, so really, when it comes to Grandstream, uh, like I, we always say, it's about that Grandstream solution. Uh, it's an all-in-one package from our IP telephony, the conferencing, uh, networking pro uh, products, and our security line, uh, and all these things integrating together. Uh, but today we're talking about business conferencing. Um, so everything from our conferencing solutions sort of uh, brings the functionalities and benefits uh, flexibility and uh, power, um, you know, of your typical conferencing devices uh, into uh, really for businesses of all size. Um, we really just try and pack these with uh, plenty of features, plenty of capabilities uh, to really modernize any organization's communications. Um, but today we're going to be talking about the newest addition to this line, the IPBT10 Enterprise Video Conferencing Server. Uh, so yeah, let's let's just kind of talk about it for a second. Um, just sort of, this is one of the newer, kind of more unique products we've made, uh, and newer additions to our portfolio here. Uh, so what is IPvT10? It's a powerful on-premise video conferencing server. So this device is a server uh, that is located on-premise for any type of enterprise, uh, larger business uh, type of network. Um, so really, like I said, we tailored this for enterprise size networks. So the ideal uh, sort of deployment for this is very large, dense deployments of many people, um, many different departments where collaboration is really key. It's an important thing here and definitely an issue. It's a problem uh, having that many people. Um, you know, you really need to have powerful collaboration tools. Um, that's where IPBT10 comes in. Uh, like I said, uh, and was kind of hinting at here, it's a building block for effective enterprise communication. Uh, really provides this sort of anchor that people uh, can be able to collaborate and work together with. Um, provides rapid peer-to-peer -peer team and department communications, um, just whether it be just one-on-one -on -one to multiple teams working together, multiple departments working together, um, or even an entire company. Uh, this is definitely a go-to device and a go-to solution. Um, so some key features of IPvT10. Um, sort of has that comprehensive uh, webinar and meeting management into the device. Um, personal conference rooms, meeting stats, and reports can all be launched by anyone within an enterprise uh, that can then be joined by anyone within or out of the network, and I'll go into how people can join and participate in a second. Um, has an enterprise directory that connects um, completely with any type of 
um, any type of contact system you're working with. Uh, has support for chat, Q&A, recording. Uh, high availability and load balancing is a feature that's pending and should be coming out with the next release. Uh, of course, it has Facebook and YouTube Live integration as well in case any type of meetings or webinars um, or town hall style uh, presentations, um, you know, could be important to be sent out, whether it be to customers, clients on social media, uh, or possibly even shareholders. Um, so just taking a brief look at the technical specs here. Um, so basically, you can have up to 10 video conferencing rooms um, at any time. That's up to. Uh, maximum of 120 1080p 30fps video feeds across all those conference rooms at any one time. So really allowing for a lot of people to work together here and to share a lot of information. Uh, H.264 and VPA is supported with uh, H.265 that's pending. Um, three megabytes per second uh, main video uh, video stream and one megabit per second for presentations. Uh, there's multiple options for individuals to join uh, for group collaboration. There is, it, we'll get into it in a second, there are a lot of different ways someone can join one of these meetings. Um, the most common one most likely being an individual joining uh, from either their desktop, their laptop via WebRTC enabled browser. Um, so we have up to 10,000 um, registered accounts um, within the device. Um, so within any type of enterprise, up to 10,000 people. And a network jitter resilience of up to 30% packet loss. Uh, to really maintain that maximum quality possible. Uh, just taking a quick look at the hardware here for those who are interested in it. Uh, it's a standard industrial 2U chassis. Um, one terabyte uh, of RAID 1 storage, um, but 500 gigabits of that are reserved for users. So we're talking about recordings um, here primarily, um, contacts and other type of, uh, other type of memory usage. Uh, two gigabit ports, one IPMI port, uh, three USB 2.0 and three USB 3.0 ports. These are primarily just used as additional storage uh, for recordings. Um, one VGA port and one RS-232 port. Uh, so just to give you guys a breakdown here of the MCU performance within the device. Um, so like I said, you can go up to 10 meetings and each of those meetings can have a maximum video feed of 120 across all of them. Um, so we can also see as we go up our total participants rise. Um, so, uh, you know, with the number of meetings um, going up, obviously total participants within those meetings goes down. Uh, while only one meeting room is in use, you guys notice it'll say 300 and 200 there at the top. Um, one network interface in use will limit the bandwidth to 200 participants in the meeting. However, if both network interfaces are in use, participants can join from internal or as a result of both network interfaces being used in external network as well, allowing up to 300 participants total. Um, so there's kind of a lot there. I'm just going to leave that for a second so people can take a look. Um, so just so you guys know, that's total maximum participants as well. So when 10 meetings are in use across all those meetings, there can be 120 participants. All right. So participating in an IPBT 10 meeting. Um, so the biggest one here, like I said, is uh, WebRTC supported browsers such as Chrome, Firefox, Opera, and Safari. Um, exactly the way you guys are participating in this meeting right now, pretty much the same exact thing, same capabilities. Um, only difference is it's an on-site solution and that provides it to be a lot more reliable, no sort of network issues um, usually present, no pesky logging in, logging out, uh, issues like that. We'll go into that in a little bit. Um, you can also join via Grandstream, GVC, conferencing endpoints, presents, and have webinars via those. Uh, Third-party conferencing endpoints such as Polycom, Cisco, and Yealink, of course, are supported as well. Uh, so this can be really integrated into an existing solution to really empower it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, IB Video Talk mobile app as well, and that's available on iOS and Android. I believe I even saw a few people joined us uh, for this webinar. Um, you know, you'd be able to join an IPVT10 meeting via that too. Um, and peering with external SIP trunks are also um, 
is also supported uh, for audio only SIP endpoint participants. All right, I'm just gonna take a sip of water here. One second. All right, so your meetings can be really highly customized here. Um, from anything from planning, just kind of the main device that should be used um, to present or give the webinar, uh, to being the subject and our organizer, time zones, start time, duration, and et cetera, um, all available here. You can have everything from a meeting type of setup, which is everyone can join and collaborate and contribute, to a webinar, which is something like this, um, you know, used for uh, just pure presentation material. Setting anything from uh, descriptions, agendas, uh, the service preferred location is always important to have. Um, everything from the different attendee controls. And of course, you can also set up custom registration pages as well for the meeting or the webinar. Uh, so you can send out those uh, invites. Um, so when it comes to actual meeting management here, everyone, um, so first it goes from scheduling the meeting, starting the meeting, uh, the meeting mode we have, uh, you can manage it by having those meeting records, email notifications, and statistics. So let's kind of pop back and forth between those to explain it. Um, so I kind of gave the example there of scheduling the meeting uh, and how you go ahead and do that, uh, you, either using the IPVU Talk portal, a GVC device, etc. cetera. Um, starting the meeting can either be done instantly uh, via the IPVT portal, um, so the portal for IPVT 10. Um, a GBC can also start an instant meeting. Scheduled meetings can also be a way to start it. Uh, so like this one, a webinar type of thing. And of course, uh, reoccurring meetings or recurring apparently, as <laughs> it says in that graphic, sorry about the typo. Uh, reoccurring meetings as well. Um, okay. So uh, regular meetings uh, as well when it comes to our meeting modes. Uh, like I said, we have those sort of regular type of meetings, which is more your hosts and participants. Everyone can share their screens. They can sort of participate in the meeting. Um, and basically, it's really meant for fluid collaboration between multiple contributors. Um, a sort of webinar setup, and that's what we're doing right now. Um, you can have a host, which is me, a panelist, which we have one of those, that's Phil in there, um, just sort of managing the meeting a little bit, but panelists can also contribute information if allowed by the host. And then, of course, all of you guys, the participants. Um, you know, you have limited capabilities. Um, point of this is more so for giving information um, in a sort of fluid and easy manner rather than uh, collaboration. Um, so moving along, uh, meeting records, there's a lot here. Um, so of course there's the meeting audio and video recording and file downloading. This is definitely really important to be able to give to people after meetings already occurred. Uh, meeting report files are also available. The chat files can be downloaded and exported along with just all those attendees. Um, and within all of this, there's uh, up to 500 gigabits of uh, local storage. So it's definitely a lot. You can keep a lot of information there. Um, then of course we do have all those other um, ports, the USB ports that you can download things directly to. Um, email notifications, um, primary thing here, uh, especially for enter enterprise using this, um, the meeting invitation email is a big thing. Reminder emails are important just to make sure you can get everyone participating. Um, a follow-up thank you email doesn't even necessarily have to say thank you. It can be followed up and edited, customized, uh, so that it has really useful follow-up information. Any type of presentation can be shared via any links there as well and a meeting statistics email that can be then exported and sent to anyone. Uh, speaking about statistics, uh, we include everything from attendee information, meeting duration, the timeline, uh, and a summary report of all, uh, of all the meetings, a history of all the meetings, just so you know how you are utilizing uh, IPVT10. Um, the enterprise can then know essentially you know, where they're using it, who's using it, and uh, how they're maximizing the investment. It's always an important aspect of buying a piece of equipment like this. Uh, so just going into some of the meeting controls here as well, uh, very chock full of stuff. Um, you can have multiple hosts, designated speakers, and panelists, um, live stream capabilities to Facebook and YouTube as well. 
um, comprehensive participant control, everything from uh, Q&A to muting themselves, to sharing their own presentation if they're allowed to do it, um, to the chat, of course, chatting directly to panelists, the host, everyone else, uh, all supported here. Um, video and audio permissions, like I said, can be completely manipulated and controlled by hosts, panelists. Um, in the case of a meeting, um, like I said, people would be able to share that themselves uh, with the host being able to kind of control that if needed. Um, like I said, we have the Q&A, the chat, and of course the video layout settings as well. There's uh, two different type of meeting layouts that anyone could have here. Uh, a type of tile layout, which is what you see on the left, where we can really see everyone who's participating, sharing, and communicating in this meeting, um, to an active speaker layout as well. Um, so basically, whoever is actively speaking, um, we have an algorithm that then will prioritize their video and present it um, as the larger type of um, the larger tile there, as you can see on the right. Um, it's pretty good. It's very, very intuitive the way it just sort of works. It's not flashing back and forth between five different people. Um, works very seamlessly. All right. So this is just a quick little um, comparison chart of us uh, versus some of what uh, some of our competitors offer in different verticals as well with their sort of um, video conferencing servers. Uh, I'll leave this up here just for a second. I'm not going to bore you guys and go all the way through it. There's two slides of it. Um, I'll leave this here for a second and then I'll flash over to the next one. If you guys want to take pictures of it, you feel free to. But like I said, just remember, I'm sending all these slides out afterwards, so you will have access to this. Um, so I'll just give you guys a moment to take a look at this one, and then I'll pop over to the next. All right, let's go to the next slide here. Okay, like I said, I'm sending this presentation out afterwards, so I'm going to keep moving here. Um, you know, if you, if you need more time, you'll be able to take a look at it a little bit later today. Uh, okay, so let's talk about product positioning when it comes to the actual device. So you guys, the right resellers, are looking to sell it, of course. Um, so how should you talk about it? How should you position it? Um, this is a powerful on-premise conferencing solution for intuitive and reliable enterprise collaboration. Um, if you guys haven't noticed, I've been using the word enterprise and collaboration a lot <laughs> throughout this presentation. Um, that first point is really one of the main um, one of the main points you want to push here. Um, this really allows a sort of enterprise or large business, any type of uh, vertical that has a lot of employees and a lot of departments. Um, if you've ever been in one you, yourself, you know, trying to organize and get a lot of people together um, for strategy and tactical meetings can be such a hassle. Um, this is the solution to that. IPv10 is an on-premise solution that then enables everyone to come together for tactical and strategical meetings um, and really to work together seamlessly and intuitively. Uh, with it being on-premise, the other good point here is that there's no pesky login issues, dropped audios, delays, confusions that, um, you know, a cloud option really can bring sometimes. Um, it's really just simple, it's on-site, and it works. Um, really gives users the control of their communication as well by centralizing streamlining the conference into one network. Uh, essentially what that means is that everyone within the network is able to host meetings, bring people in, um, internal and external, use whatever audio, or excuse me, use whatever video conferencing device they want to use to present, have reoccurring meetings, um, and really collaborate the way they need to. Um, then of course security is always an important thing and we definitely with all of our products always aim to have top of the line security. Um, there's no exception here when it comes to IPvT10. Um, you know, just that information is very important, um, you know, to all of your customers and, you know, therefore it is to us. 
Uh, so we do everything we can to keep all the communications locked tight, secured, and encrypted. All right. Uh, so deployment scenarios. Uh, I've been saying it a lot. Enterprises and large businesses. I'm like a, I'm like a broken, uh, whatever it's called here, broken record. Um, but that is the main focus here, everyone. Um, sort of those more fast-paced verticals with the need for intuitive and powerful collaboration. So research and development firms, logistics and transportation, um, warehousing, sales-driven firms. These are all the type of verticals you could maybe look at when you're doing your deployments. We could really utilize something like this, an on-premise uh, video conferencing uh, server. Uh, businesses with multiple locations as well um, really require that on-demand conferencing. If you have businesses with a lot of geographical different areas, uh, having just the avail availability to conference together gives a huge advantage. Um, you can really connect those internal employees and external customers. And I stated it before, but the multi-departmental organizations that require seamless integration, um, you know, whether it be sales to logistics, marketing to sales, marketing to your engineers, um, you know, accounting to sales, that's a very frequent one. Um, you know, that's definitely something we want to look in here. Uh, just those full on full companies and enterprises. Um, so let's go into a little bit more nitty gritty of the applications for a moment. Um, so we're looking at sort of large multi-departmental meetings to decide and present new strategies. This is definitely a very common use case you would see. Um, like I said, sales, marketing, research and development um, departments, whether they are working together or just within their own department, um, having this type of on-premise solutions so that they can easily all work together uh, is really big, especially when it comes to people who are working within a headquarters um, and then with everyone who is regional, it really helps bring everyone in, in together. Uh, weekly company-wide uh, prep meetings between key staff members. Uh, so looking at higher educations, government and logistics, um, where you really do need to have those reoccurring meetings, sort of prep for the week, um, work on the strategy, and then execute. Um, this really helps everyone stay productive throughout the entire week. Uh, reoccurring strategy meetings, finance organizations, accounting and engineering, um, definitely a very important thing where you need to get updates um, pretty frequently. Uh, whether it be weekly, bi-weekly, what have you, um, you know, definitely sharing the information and working together uh, is important. And this is a very common use case when it comes to this device. Um, portfolio presentation meetings with large clients and potential customers, uh, definitely in a very uh, key and important use case here, uh, whether you're sort of maybe a new distributor has been signed on to one of your customers, uh, and they need to be able to present their portfolio to maybe 100 or 120 new salespeople who are within that distributor, um, you know, that can definitely be used here be for this device. All right. So the selling demo and licensing when it comes to this device uh, works the same as everything else. You'll want to contact your distributor for more um, if you are a reseller installer. Uh, if you are a distributor, obviously you want to go ahead and contact your sales contact. Um, but all IPvT10 units are sold at a fixed price with a demo only license. Um, the license includes a watermark on all videos, but essentially it is a 60 day trial period um, for the users to detect maximum performance of the device. So you would be able to deploy this device into an enterprise uh, and give them 60 days to try it out for free and make sure um, you know, it's everything that they're looking for. Um, after the, that 60 day period, it reverts back to just being a four video feed and eight participants um, sort of device once the license expires, a new one will be needed. Um, and then licensing is provided upon the final sale of the device. Um, so to the customer, um, for more information on that, you'll want to contact your sales manager um, or your distributor. Uh, three licensing options are available for the customers. A 49-way MCU uh, up to 100 attendees, 98 ways MCU uh, and 200 attendees, um, or the final option, which is 120-way MCU and 300 attendees. 
Um, I'm going to say it one more time. <laughs> Contact your sales manager for a little bit more information or your distributor there. They'll be able to help you out. I unfortunately am marketing and not sales, so I, I can't really give you guys information on margins or numbers or anything like that. Uh, so if you're asking the questions in the chat right now, I'm, I apologize. I'm not going to be able to answer that, but I can definitely get you in contact with someone if need be. All right, guys. So there was a lot there on this new device, but that's pretty much it for our video talk for today. Um, let me just go ahead and get this going again. So you guys can look at my face. Boop. All right. Uh, there we go. I am back. And I actually just noticed I forgot to say this at the beginning, but now I'm, and for those who don't know who I am, my name is Brian. Uh, I'm a community marketing manager here at Grandstream Networks. I do these webinars and video talks a lot, so you'll be seeing me if you keep joining these. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start working my way through this, uh, the Q&A section right now. Um, so feel free to go ahead and utilize that. Um, if you're all done with the presentation, you don't really need more information, feel free to leave. I'm not going to hold you hostage or anything like that. Uh, it was a pleasure, you know, having you, but I'm going to start working my way through this. So, uh, the, how many video feeds on a single page? Um, so it's up to 120, um, no matter what. It's up to 120 video feeds across all conferencing. So it could be one conference room has 120, or there's three conference rooms that has, one of them has 100 and two of them has 10. Uh, it's 120 video feeds across all conference rooms. Um, I'm not sure if I understand that question. Oh, okay, good, Phil, Phil got back to you on that one. All right, well, there aren't too many questions here. I definitely see, though, with the chat, there was, there's a few issues with the audio and video being, uh, being out of sync. I'm sorry about that, guys. I'll try and fix it in the recording when I send that out. Um, it may be just a little bit of network issues here on our side. I know there's a lot of construction going wrong uh, around our buildings that could be affecting it, possibly. Uh, anyway, um, if you have any more questions, please feel free to use the Q&A feature. Uh, just kind of looking through the chat right now to see if there's any that I didn't catch. Oh, also, we have a few more going in. Uh, what's the price compared to others? Um, you know, like I said, when it comes to the price, you really want to contact your distributor um, or your uh, uh, or your sales manager for that. I, I really don't kind of have that information, um, unfortunately. Uh, but I can definitely get you uh, connected with someone. Uh, Mark Swell asks, is it possible to have multiple administrators? Yep, yeah, totally is. You can add as many administrators to the device as you want. Um, they can administer, excuse me, be administrators of everything from the entire device, um, all the capabilities of it, or you can even just give someone or a group of people um, the availability to just use it for, let's say, meetings. Um, or maybe you want to give them the capability to um, look at the meetings and download recordings. Uh, you can totally do that. Um, really easy to do. You can do that entirely through the IPBT10 portal. Um, all right. Will administrators have different, right? Yeah, I, I just answered that. They, they can, yeah. So yeah, so we are priced below normal competitors. I mean, when it comes to it, substantially. I mean, I can't tell you that much. Um, kind of the advantage of this is sort of hitting that sort of market of those enterprises and larger, um, larger businesses who don't require something to the Cisco scale. I mean, let's be honest, the Cisco scale is insane when it comes to those. That's that's you know dealing with the Googles and the Apples of the world and everything. Um, but there are many, we found many, many companies out there who cannot afford that extent of a video conferencing server and on-site solution, but they really need one. Um, IPVT10 sort of fills that void. It fills that gap, um, especially as video conferencing is becoming one of the main new ways of collaboration. Let's face it, technology is improving. It's getting a lot easier to access things. Um, for example, make huddle rooms pretty much available for anyone and everyone. 
um, IV, IPBT10 is a good way to sort of just spread that collaboration to everyone and also integrate um, just basically the other, <coughs> excuse me, integrate pretty much all the other uh, video conferencing solutions into so just one full, um, you know, sort of complete deployment basically. Uh, will you support H323? Yep, that's on the way. That is, that's pending. Um, I didn't put it in the presentation because I'm not sure when it's going to come out. So I don't want, you know, I don't want to get you guys hyped about it. And then, you know, I'm not sure when it happens. Um, but I, I do know that's for sure pending. I was talking to an engineer about that a little bit, a little bit earlier yesterday. All right, guys. In case the audio participants come through SIP trunk, will they be asked meeting ID and password on IBR? Yep, they will. Absolutely. Um, I believe they'll even be given, um, essentially, it's a, it's a phone number that is basically custom to the meeting as well. All right, so I think that's, that's pretty much all of them, it looks like, guys. Uh, thank you so much. Quick shout out to Phil. Thanks for helping with all the questions and stuff. Uh, like I said, this meeting was recorded. I'll be sending out the presentation and the recording uh, shortly after, uh, a little bit later today. Uh, thank you so much for coming by and participating, looking and learning about IPVT10, um, being part of this video talk. Uh, we have another one coming up about the new WP820 uh, portable Wi-Fi phone. So if you're interested in joining that one, feel free to go to our webinars page and sign up there. Uh, it's mid-August. Uh, appreciate it, guys. Have yourselves a great rest of the day and a wonderful weekend. Take care. Thank you.